you. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for having an opportunity to come in here on a Tuesday and Thursday about you. And as we wind up, I pray that any academics that we're struggling with, any sickness and going around, just you know, place your hand over that. And that we can be guided through. I pray that the message we hear today will not go in vain. It'll be that will impact the lives and souls of the people in this room. We want to ask all these things in your name. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Every so often as uh, we're singing in worship, I, I don't have every little thing planned as I come up here. Sometimes we sing a song and there's the lyrics within it stick out to me. It's just like the Spirit telling me, you need to get up there and you need to say something. I believe there will be breakthrough. Do you really believe that in your life today? You're all going through something. I, I looked at last week, I looked at this week, and the week after that, and I looked at all the things on my plate. I looked at all the things going on in my life, the difficulties and challenges that I'm going through. And I hear you all day in and day out, not all of you, but many of you walking around, I'm so tired, I'm so exhausted, I have this going on in my life, ah, oh, I have this happen to me. I don't know if I can get to the end of the school year. Well, I don't know about you, but we serve a God bigger than anything that you're going through in your life, right? Doesn't matter what struggles you're dealing with. It doesn't matter your college applications. It doesn't matter the AP test you have coming up. It doesn't matter the an ankle injury, your foot injury. Whatever it is going on in your life, we serve a God that is bigger than all of that. Do you believe that you can see breakthrough in your life, though? Do you believe that he can get you through those challenges? We just sang a song. Do you believe the words that you sang? That's why I challenge you at times in worship just to stand and read. Read the words. What is being sung? And in a lot of ways, that will make it sink in all the deeper during worship. Today, we have a speaker who has come many times. He has had... Uh, his kids come through Emmanuel. Uh, they've been star athletes. They've been great individuals. He's an incredible man of God. I am so excited to have him back at Emmanuel. He's passionate. He's engaging. He loves the Lord. What he says, he lives out. I don't think he needs any, introdu any introduction. You all know who he is. But either way, let's give a warm Emmanuel welcome for Mr. Darren Person. What you was thinking I was, I was walking up. Man, those J's are tight. <laughs> Am I right? Yeah. yeah, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> Thank you, Emmanuel. Thank you for allowing me to come again. It's just an honor every time I get an opportunity to come before you. Some of you know. How many I know in here? Raise your hand if y'all seen me before. Yeah, that's all right. All right, man. Good to see you. Yeah, we know each other. It's good to be here. Um, you know, every opportunity I get to get, be at Emmanuel is just a blessing to me. And it's interesting, I don't know where um, Mr. Woods is, but I thought like two years ago, I was giving my song, I guess, song, if you will. I said, you know, I was crying on my way out. This is my last year at Emmanuel. My kids are gone, but you guys keep inviting me back. I thought I was done, man. I thought when Amherst was out of here, that was it. He mentioned just earlier, yes, I have my, my family that went through Emmanuel, never expected one day that we would end up at this beautiful place, but we were actually in Clovis, and my son, y'all might know him, Darren Person, um, Jr., he was just texting me right now. He said, tell him, I said, what's up? He said, what's up? He said, tell him, I said, what's up? He's actually in Germany right now playing professional ball from a Ger in Germany and came right here out of Emmanuel, out of this gym right over here, but he said, man, I can't believe you're going back. And as I was walking out the door this morning, my daughter, Amaris, a beautiful little baby girl now, she's 19, she said, oh, you're going to Emmanuel? I wish I could go with you. I said, come on. She said, no, I got to go get a latte. I said, well, you know, <laughs> priorities, right? So she, she went her way, and then I went my way. But they told me to just say hello. My wife said hello. It is always good to be in the house. Every time I come, some years ago, 
Um, I wrote this book, and I like to give out a free copy because I, I'm keeping on. I'm writing another book right now. But how many of you like to read and like to have this book right here? If you do, just come right here. I'll give it to you. My brother, come on, come on up here. All right, give him a hand, give him a hand, give him a hand. I wrote that book some years ago because um, it talks about Bye Bye Boogeyman, and you've probably even heard me talk about it before because I, um, I wanted to really reach out to people about mental health. And I had no idea because I was actually in the process of writing another book, and I can't stop um, traveling and talking about this book. Me and my wife over the last like, year or two have been really doing a lot of work and traveling, and a lot of it is this. You know, as we talk about like mental health, I've been very vulnerable, right? And you guys go out and look at me, y'all know I like an amen. Can I hear you say amen? Amen. Oh, yeah, I feel like I'm at a church now. Yeah, you say amen every once in a while too because I feel real good. Um, and we were traveling everywhere because I've been opening up about like mental health. And what I did was something that was interesting to me because as a man, I wanted to always keep it to myself. But I said, I want to be a vulnerable about my own situation. And I can remember being your age, being a person that was dealing with a lot of stress and a lot of anxiety. And I didn't guess this. Just like many of you that are looking at me today, I didn't tell anybody or my friends of the pressure and anxiety and the depression that I was doing, that I was going through. So what I have for this next part of my life, like committing my life to really just opening up and being honest about it. Because what happened, check this out. So when I was a young person dealing with it, then I got older, what do you think happened? It was still there. So I, so I said, well, I need to be able to, you know, I want to be delivered. I want God to deliver me from it. So many years I would pray to God. Sometimes it would get better. Sometimes it wouldn't, right? But over the last years, I, I want to say about 10 years ago, I had this bout with like this anxiety disorder and I had this bout with having like panic attacks. And listen, I'm a very professional person. And listen, I counsel other people. And I was like, why am I dealing with stuff myself and I'm supposed to be helping others? And a lot of times I was really quiet about it because I just wanted to, you know, be okay, especially in my position. You know, I work for Fresno Unified School District. I have a position where I oversee a lot of students over about 6,000 students in various programs, but I said, once I start opening up and start talking about it and not always preaching to them about it because obviously it's in a different school district, but as I talk to people, check this out, I started getting delivered myself. There was something about like being honest. And today our theme is this, and real quick because I want to talk about that. You guys say this, your whole heart. Y'all help me out a little bit. Say your whole heart. Listen, I think when the pastor was just up talking, that really, really connected with me to be able to connect with you. I went to a Christian university. I've been to chapel before. I don't want to admit it, but sometimes I was sleeping in chapel. And I ended up being an RA in Oral Roberts University. And I remember, I know you guys see a lot of people come up here, right? And everybody's kind of giving you their best. Because especially as adults, we want you to get a nugget or two that will change your life. There were times when I was at ORU that, you know, I was tired, working late, you know, didn't always listen in. But every once in a while, through all those people, somebody spoke something in my heart that really changed me. I hope that moment is like for some of you today, especially for you that are dealing with your own pressure. What's interesting in my work that I do, even as a counselor, people talk about the work that you do with adults. I say I work with more students as much as I do adults that are dealing with, like, the weight of the world. And for you, it's a little differently, I know, but I know it's the case. So this word about your whole heart is for somebody out there that I think will be a blessing. Somebody say, your whole heart. Your whole heart. The Bible says in Proverbs, y'all can write that down, put it on your phone. Write this scripture somewhere, and I, I challenge you to do this because God did this with me. Sometimes you, like, wait for, like, one word to change your life. Then you walk out of the room, and you're like, I don't know if that did it, or maybe that did, man, that was great. God began to challenge me about meditating on his word day and night. 
I want you to write this down as you get up like every morning. Say this scripture. Listen, if you want to change anything in life, you got to do something different. And sometimes I used to wait for like this one word to change me. But how many know in your mind, sometimes you fight things and they come to you every day. Like I told you when I was dealing with like um, anxiety, every day I have a different thought that would be like pressure on me. And sometimes I didn't counteract that thought. I would just let it like reside. Oh damn man, all this pressure, man, you gotta do better. You gotta do better. And I would hear that every day. So I said, man, I'm going, what I'm gonna do early in the morning sometimes is say the word early in the morning over my life over my family, over my children, just as much negative thoughts come, I say, I'm going to counter after with the word. Can you say amen? amen? Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean out in your own understanding. And in all your ways, submit to him. And he will make your path straight. Some of the things that we deal with, if we would just trust God, it will help us. Listen, I'm not here you know, sprinkling some magic dust and saying it will go away. Because my own trials that I had, they didn't go away in like one day. You know, a lot of that stuff came from my upbringing or what I went through, but it was over time. Can somebody say over time? Like believing it over time, like trusting God over time. Sometimes I wanted things just to go away fast, but it just didn't. But we trust in God every day. And I, when I thought about it, when I was coming here, I always get a dudes. That's why I put the J's on. Because I said, man, I'm with the young people today, man. I'm with the young folk, man, so I got to be straight, right? So one of the things I thought about when I come here, people always ask me this question when I talk to students. If you can go back to being, like, young, what, what grade do we have? How many seventh graders? Where are you at? Make some noise, seventh graders. Yeah, they got a little. Eighth graders, where are you at? What are eighth graders? Yeah. Oh. Make some noise, eighth graders. Yeah. Where the freshmen at up in here? Where you at? Yeah. And the tenth graders, where you at? Yeah. My man, your hype man. Eleventh graders. Yeah. Twelfth graders. Yeah. Oh. It was interesting how the, the dynamics went. The, you know, young people, they all happy. I know the eleventh graders like, man, I can't wait to be a twelfth grader. Then the 12th grade is like, man, I'm getting ready to get out of here. I'm still cool, but it's all good. But listen, when I was your age, people always asked me, when you go back, I was like, no, I don't know if I'll go back. I really don't. I don't know if I'll go back. But if I could go back, just listen to me. I would do things a little differently in how much I gave in terms of, like, my, my heart, too. Where Tyson? Tyson, you here? Where you at, Tyson? You know I was going to call you out. That's my neighbor. Say, hey, what's up, Tyson? That's my neighbor, cross street neighbor. Me and Tyson know each other because when Darren was here, Darren was a basketball player here, but we would um, shoot shots. Tyson shoots shots all the time. Tyson, tell him how nice my J is. It's nice, isn't it? He's lying, so because I ain't tonight, can't even shoot the backboard. I can't even hit the backboard. But um, we, and one thing I would tell him, and I would see him shoot outside a lot, is if I could go back because I wanted to be a basketball player, I would shoot like a thousand shots a day. I'm serious, I would, because you hear all these great um, NBA stars, and they shoot like a thousand shots like a day. When I talk to my son sometimes, I say, "What's he doing?" He said, "Man, I shot my 500 shots. I gotta go back to the gym. It's cold out here in Germany, but I'm gonna sit, sit, shoot another thousand shots." I said, "Why?" He said, "Man, he always tells me this. He said, man, because I'm all in." He said, whatever I do, man, is all in. I only live this one time. If I can go back, I will like, go all in. Whatever y'all doing in sports or in grades or in school, I would go all in. Because I hated that I always had, like, one foot in and one foot out. I was, like, just kind of chilling, right? I was coming to school kind of, you know, hoping I'd get an education, but hoping I'd get a girlfriend at the same time. Y'all know what I'm talking about? And I actually did get a girlfriend at the same time. <laughs> because now she's my wife. <laughs> it don't happen for everybody like that, but I was like, hey, what's up, Iris? She was like, what's up? And, you know, I was like, do you want to marry me one day? Yeah, give, give it up, give it up. <laughs> she was like, I don't want to marry you because you all broke. <laughs> she got, you got holes in your shoes. I said, you don't know. When I get about 51, I'm going to be wearing some J's. Stop tripping. 
and Iris, you know, became my wife, right? And, and, and uh, you know, we, we started dating when I was, um, no, I ain't gonna go through that. Y'all think I'm, yeah, yeah. So I was 11, and she was a freshman. I know, look at me however you wanna look at me. Yeah. Yeah, I see y'all judging me, but I don't, don't. It get better when you're 50 and you're 46, though. It does, it feels better. But I went all in. <laughs> I went all in. I was bringing roses and candies. Hey, listen, whatever you do in life, why not just give 100%? Amen? Amen. And one of the things about in your relationship with Christ, at the same time, go all in. One thing I didn't tell you about my relationship, like when Iris is at the age of 17, I gave my heart to the Lord. And I, and I, and I, if y'all didn't know me before, I was just doing whatever, man. Like, whatever. And it wasn't just about the bad things it was doing, just my mind, what I was going through. And I gave my life to the Lord because my brother gave his life to the Lord. And I knew what my brother was doing. <laughs> and he was like, Darren, I'm going to go all in. Can somebody say all in? And he said, like, hey, man, I'm giving my life. I said, man, if you give your life to the Lord, I'm going to do it. I came back, gave, gave my life to the Lord. He changed me. I came to my boys. What's interesting, when you get saved and you tell other people, either they're going to be with you or they're going to be hating on you. My boys hated on me. Like, how are you going to do that, B? I was like, man, I want to do something different. If y'all know where, we come, where I come from, a whole bunch of poverty, a whole bunch of violence. I don't want to get into that. But I said, I have to do something different. And, they were, I said, and I heard about Jesus and that he can change your life. He can give you peace. And I want that. They said, man, you ain't going to make it. I remember. I came back on Monday. My guy said, you ain't going to make it. You're trying to be different. Then I wondered. I said, no, nah, man. I said, y'all, if y'all going to be with me, I'm going to change up so I can get my Bible. And listen, I was a star athlete. I was a star point guard of the team. I was a track star of the uh, high school. But I said, man, I want to do something different. I want to be different, and I need Jesus in my life. My boys, to this day, they all respect me for who I became. I know my time is up pretty soon. But at age 17, I gave my life to the Lord. You know, he changed me. Not too long after that, I did meet Iris. And what was interesting about that, as you give your whole heart to the Lord, one of the things about giving your whole heart, I said, I wanted somebody that could accompany me, that could help me in life. And God kind of he knew what I needed, so he gave me her. And what I mean about giving your whole heart, it's not just like going to church, you know, punching your ticket, or going to chapel, to say I went to Emmanuel. You know, God wants your whole heart. You know, like everything about you, your, your thoughts. And I would let God get in and listen up, y'all. I would let him come to some places of my heart, but not in every place. Especially in the places where I was slipping up and making mistakes. Because how many know when I was 17 and decided to live my life for Christ that I still made mistakes? How many say, yeah, you still, yeah, of course. I did. I, I didn't always walk this straight, narrow road. But at that time, listen, I would go to God. Check this out. I don't know if you know this, but he sees you, knows your thoughts. Know what you're doing. You can't hide from him. So I would go to him and say, God, I'm having problems in this area. I'm weak in these areas. I need your help. I gave him my whole heart. And when you look at that scripture, and I'm going to say this to you, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean out on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him. And he will make your path straight. As you give your whole heart to the Lord, you can't lean into your own understanding. Some things just don't make sense. I was just talking to the coach. Um, a minute ago, and sometimes, listen, sometimes you, and some of you have, you've come up to chapel, came to the altar from where you're sitting, you said, yes, Lord, I, 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 I submit to you at home, and things didn't work out like you wanted them to. I can remember this day, because I was just talking to coach, my son Darren, y'all know him, and I'll say this, I'll talk about him, because this is Emmanuel. I remember he was looking forward to going overseas or finishing his basketball career, we were playing basketball at FPU. Darren come down the day before. I called me and said, Dad, I'm killing these guys. You know, he said, damn, 30 points a game. He said, man, I'm feeling good. I said, what? He said, we can go to the next level. And I remember Darren came down with a two-foot jump stop, blew out the left 
leg, his ACL. And all of a sudden, he was like, and I remember being in the hospital, he said, man, dad, this don't even make sense. I've been through a lot in life. Why this? I said, sometimes you just don't understand, man. That's why I told him, I said, sometimes you just don't understand. Things don't make sense, but God will work it out. Then he told me two years ago, after it happened, he said, Dad, I got a scripture for you. Romans 8 and 28. He says, and we know that in all things, God works for good of those who love him, who have called, been called according to his purpose. Listen, as you trust God, Sometimes it won't make sense. Sometimes it won't always add up. But if you are in him, you're called to him, things will work out. But I want to encourage you to manual today, don't lose heart. Don't lose the path even as young people. Stay faithful. Some people will fall away. Some people will uh, talk about you that you're trying to be different. Some of your friends that you thought that would be there with you maybe decide to do other things. They'll say, man, why are you trying to be so religious? Why are you trying to be like this Jesus freak? But listen, I'm here today because I stayed the course. I encourage you as young people to stay the course. And sometimes when it don't make sense, God will be there for you. You're looking at a person that's dealt with his own stuff. And there were times that I doubted God. If I asked the question in this room, like, how many, how many of you at some times you doubted God and said, God, this don't make sense. I remember when my mother died. She was the sweetest person in the world. That just don't make sense. When I had a job that I was looking to get, and I said, I'm the best person. It don't. Or you all that's going to go off and you're looking for a school that you want to get into. It don't. But God has a way of working everything out for you. I promise you that. And it doesn't matter who you are or how popular you are. He just works things out for you if you just trust him. Somebody asked me the other day, like, why do you think you are successful in what you have? Some my friends that know me very well, I just got a position in my, my new job as this new executive director where I'm over these students. I said, man, I didn't even know. I couldn't even really, like, write or read in high school. But I gave my life to the Lord. And it's just, he just began to direct my path. He will work everything out for you if you continue faithful in what you do, no matter what your age is, no matter who you are or how smart you are. Just continue to trust God and watch him work everything out for you. I'm a witness to that. Come on, man, you put your hands together for God on this morning. I encourage you, write down that scripture also for you that were looking for that scripture, Romans 8 and 28. Did I make my time frame or am I too early? Right on time? All right. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I want to encourage you this morning, you know, to do just that. And I would like to pray for you where you're at today. If you can bow, bow your head. I'd love to pray for you. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for this Emmanuel family. Thank you for allowing me to come together with them again. I know it's always part of your purpose. Lord, I thank you for even those that are listening that are dealing with weight and thoughts and anxiety or depression or whatever it might be. Lord, that they've been trying to deal with stuff by themselves. Lord, I ask you to walk alongside them to help lift that weight, that burden. God, even as a young person that sometimes they feel like nobody understands. But God, I know you are with them and that you're keeping them and that you're covering them. I just give you honor and glory for all that you are doing in their life. And I thank you for this time that we had together. In Jesus' name, we all say amen. Amen. And amen. <laughs> Lord, thank you so much uh, for Mr. Person and the fact that he uh, has given his time this morning to uh, bring forth uh, wisdom about the life uh, that you have taken him through, that he has gone through ups and downs, uh, whirlwinds, and uh, beautiful moments, Lord. But again, you are the orchestrator of all of it. 
uh, you had a path laid out for him, and he allowed you to lead him. So may that be, may that wisdom and your truth from your word that he presented to us this morning be something that lays on our hearts, and it's not something that uh, stand, we stand, uh, we don't stand behind, and that we ignore this morning. I pray that you be with him and his wife. May you continue to uh, give him a heart of love, uh, a heart of excitement, uh, a heart of a youthful um, uh, joy with her, Lord. May you be with the, his kids as well, as one of them is all the way in Germany. May uh, you keep him safe. May you keep him free from injury there. And may you be with his daughter here as well. And may uh, you be with him in his new job endeavor and watch over him and use him in a powerful way with the students that he is overseeing. Praise in your name. Amen. Thank you. All right, seniors.